Hey BookTube, how's it going? Um, today I was going to do a um, Friday Reads um, about what I just read and what I'm going to read like today and tomorrow, I guess. Um, but then Zoe um, reminded me, well she didn't remind me, she told me, um, that today is the anniversary of the death of Frank Frazetta which um, is a huge deal because, um, like many people my age and a little bit older, um, puberty would not have been the same if it were not for guys like Frank Frazetta and Boris Vallejo and, um, fuck, even Earl Norm. Um, but, uh... The book I read um, had a Frank Frazetta cover, so it all kind of added up, don't you think? So, um, what I ended up reading was um, Edgar Rice Burroughs' The Outlaw of Torn. Um, this was in my TBR pile, so I'm doing good already. Um, second, this was Edgar Rice Burroughs' second novel. Um, he wrote this in between um, Princess of Mars and um, the first Tarzan book. So um, there, you, you still there's still a little there's a few things in here that I found repetitive, and I know that when um, this was coming out, he it was being serialized. So I feel almost like there was like a bit of like word count trying to hit. Um, cause there are some repetitive lines and stuff like that in it. Um, but it is a historical fiction novel about, um, the, what would you call it? The, the kidnapped, son of Henry the third. Um, it, it, I was actually really curious as to how much of this was based on, um, fact. And, um, after doing a bit of research there, um, there was a pretty good amount, um, based on fact. So if any of you like that kind of era stuff, I recommend this. There is a lot of like, um, chivalry and romance thrown in there. Um, as with most Edgar Rice Burroughs stuff. Um, but you can tell, at least I could tell that this was like one of his first outings, I think is the best way to put that. But that, look at that bitch in Frank Frazetta cover. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you all the books that I have um, that I can get to at the moment. I had to pull some out of a box. Luckily, the box is open um, to show you some of the Frazetta covers. Um, also, the Death Dealer books, um, I don't remember who wrote those. I don't have those. Jody um, from Jody Hart's books. Um, she has the first Death Dealer book. If you want to catch that um, cover, it's one of my favorites. Um, so anyway, so there's this. So that could get packed. Um, and you're going to notice that there is quite a bit of Conan. So this is the first Conan book of the Lancer Ace editions. Um, here's book five. That's a cool cover. A background sick. Here's another Conan the Conqueror. And it's like, if you play the Conan game, <laughs> like, you'll notice, like, that necklace. Uh, you'll remember that. Um, that helmet. 
you could get in the Conan game. Mina, hush. Um, then we got Conan the Warrior. Look at that. Just slaying mofos. Um, I wish I had all of the Conan books from this, because there's this one, one of my favorite, um, covers from this is where Conan's, like, strangling some dude on top of a pile of bodies. It's pretty, pretty sick. Um, this is one of my favorite covers of his, um, from At the Earth's Core, with the Mahar about to kill the beautiful Dean. That is sick. You know, Frazetta, <clears throat> he could draw the female form. Let's see here. Some of these ones, the early Ace ones, yeah, like this one right here, Back to the Stone Age. Um, I believe this cover is Ray Crinkle. Roy Crinkle, I mean. Um, and then this is Frank Rosetta. That little whatever the fuck that is. Some sort of pterodactyl. I know there's not a P sound, guys. Okay. Um, so there's that. So some of these early Ace ones have that. This one actually might be a Frazetta cover as well, without the, yeah. So the cover is Frazetta for Land of Terror. And what do we have for the inside picture? Oh, a saber tooth and a mammoth going at it. So in case you didn't know, and if I didn't say it, so May 10th, um, wait, do I already have this one? Oh, yeah, this is a duplicate. Huh, another one of those. And <clears throat> I'm like choking here. And then, look at that. Savage Palo Sadar. But um, he died in 2010 on May 10th. So now I'm going to go through books that are in my TBR that you guys have already seen, which is kind of funny. Um, but he did this... cover here I'm trying to see if there's there's a little piece right there but the Gulliver of Mars cover he did that um, he did this Otis Albert Klein Mesa of the Moon Conan the Avenger. Oh, wait, I don't want to mix these up. Come on, we'll put them here. <clears throat> Carson of Venus. Actually, um, pretty far into this now. Um, this has a very different feel than um, the first two Venus books. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about that. I'm going to leave that out. And then this one, I could have sworn I said on the last video that this was a Vallejo. Um, but it's not. It's a Frazetta. And um, the reason why you would know that is look at the eyes on that tiger. Boris would never do eyes on a tiger like that. Never, ever. It would never happen in a million years. So, my apologies if I confused everybody. But yeah, 
This is banging. Banging. Okay. Um, and then we got the Moon Men. Look at that. The Moon Maid. You want to look at that closer? Okay. There you go. Nice. And finally, the Oakdale Affair. Probably looks a little bit better on the back. Now, um, it's funny because I was, I've been listening to a podcast called um, Appendix N, which I highly recommend everybody listen to um, if you like the things I'm about to say. Um, what Appendix N is, is in the um, 1979 um, Dungeon Masters book that Gary Gygax wrote for um, Dungeons and Dragons. There is a um, appendix called Appendix N, which is basically all of the books that inspired Gary Gygax to make Dungeons and Dragons. So in there, um, you have obviously Conan, um, Robert E. Howard, you have H.P. Lovecraft, you have um, Fritz Leiber's Fawford and Gray Mauser, you have um, Clark Ashton Smith, A. Merritt, you have um, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, The Hobbit, Edgar Rice Burroughs, the um, Pellucidor, uh, Barsoom, and Amtor series, um, and just all sorts of stuff. Lee Brackett, um, there, there's like 70 books or something in there. <clears throat> well, anyway. So, uh, and what this podcast does, they will read one of the books and they'll talk about it. And then they'll talk about its Dungeons and Dragons applications. And one thing that keeps coming up is that um, the older generation of people who, for instance... Uh, like this, okay... <clears throat> Um, the El Sprig de Camp, Lynn Carter, um, edits, um, of the Conan books that came out in paperback by Lancer and Ace in the sixties. Um, especially this one, this is, um, Bjorn Nyborg, Conan the Avenger. Um, I think this is actually, what is it called? The Return of Conan or something? The story he wrote? Yeah, The Return of Conan. Um, a lot of people who are probably older than me will talk about how the El Sprague de Camp um, Conan books are the definitive version because those are the ones that they read growing up and they don't want to read some junk that Robert E. Howard sent to weird tales. Um, that if it wasn't for El Sprague de Camp and Lynn Carter, no one would know who Conan is. And, um, the edits that El Sprague de Camp made were for the better. Um, and so on and so forth. Um, yada, yada, yada. But a lot of it, I believe, isn't so much the El Sprague de Camp versions of these books, but I think it's more of the feeling that the Frank Frazetta covers gave to those readers. Like the imagery in these covers. Um, like, it would seriously turn you on your head. Like, my dad, when I was growing up, he had um, Frazetta pictures and Vallejo pictures, like, hanging up in the house, like, posters and shit. And um, he was so into Conan, okay, 
that he had eight by ten black and white framed pictures of Arnold Schwarzenegger from all the different versions of Conan. Or not all the different versions, but just from different scenes of Conan. And the reason why I bring that up is because, like, I feel like a Robert E. Howard purist would not have pictures of Arnold Schwarzenegger up in their house. Like, even though the first Conan movie is good, the second one is laughably bad. Um... But it's still fun, I guess. But anyway, what I'm trying to get at is my dad was probably one who would have said, yeah, El Spring to Camp, there's nothing wrong with those versions. They're, they are the definitive versions. Whereas me, um, growing up in the 80s and being a teenager in the 90s, right when all of the... Um, a lot of the found um, Robert E. Howard stuff was coming out and then um, into the 2000s with the Del Rey editions um, that really um, showed you exactly how much um, El Sprague de Camp had done to these stories, especially stories like... Um, Hall of the Dead and um, God in a Bowl and all that stuff, like um, where it's just like a completely different story kind of thing. <clears throat> so anyway, point being, um, Frank Frizz, I think the Frank Frazetta artwork on these Conan books is what made a lot of people like say, no, El Sprig de Camp did good. Just because, like, these books, the main reason why I'm collecting them is for the Frazetta covers. Um, I am interested in reading what um, DeCamp and Carter did to the Howard work, but it's really for the Frazetta covers. And um, so, anyway, that was kind of, like, a long, rambly thing. I had the... I didn't shut the curtains because I thought that it would, um, I would be able to show the books off good if I held them up close and stuff. And I think that worked. But now that the books are gone, I am a Sith Lord. Um, so anyway, Frank Frazetta, uh, awesome artist. Um, he actually did some like Molly Hatchet album covers and, um, some like movie posters, uh, like so many of us have seen his artwork on stuff and there's, there's still to this day, like I'll still see something that I did not know Frank Frazetta did. And I'm like, dude, that looks like Frazetta stuff. And then I go, Oh my God, that's a Frazetta thing. So, um, it, it's, um, it's interesting. It's fun to check out his stuff. Cause he basically, I think he made sword and sorcery. Cool. If that makes sense. Like, I mean, you could tell his style from like, where, where's that? Where's that book? Like, his early stuff, like this Gulliver of Mars painting, okay, to this painting. Like, holy shit, you know, like, that's completely different. And then you're like, wait, there was a tiger there? Exactly. So, I feel like if it wasn't for Frank Frazetta making these, like, very pulpy and kind of lurid... um covers where there's like some naked or half naked chick either about to kill some animal or um some dude trying to protect the damsel in distress you know like he put a different level of cool onto I'm saying cool so funny. You put a different level of cool on sword and sorcery. Like it's as much as it's like a nerdy um genre, 
like it became a nerdy slash uber manly genre. Um, and I think that really carried over to its popularity from the sixties to be able to be, um, put into a comic book in the, cause like, you remember how I was talking about, um, Thongor, the Lynn Carter, um, books and how Stan Lee, I don't know if I talked about this, but Stan Lee wanted to put out Thongor in comic and not Conan, um, because he liked the sound of Thongor better. <clears throat> Frank Frazetta did the Thongor covers too. So it's like same dude, right? Um, so if it wasn't for those covers and then the seventies happen and we have no Conan comics at Marvel, the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie doesn't happen because the reason why that movie um, was put together was based on the images from this awesome comic that had just like amazing artwork in it, which was based on the artwork that Frank Frazetta had done. So it's like if all of these things didn't happen in the order that they happened, like we wouldn't have what we have right now. And I really strongly believe that um, Frank Frazetta is the the key to that. And I really feel like um, the DeCamp estate owes Frank Frazetta like everything they have. Um, and some of you might be going, oh, well, Conan stories are really strong and blah, 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 blah. Okay. How many of you are out there collecting the gnome press editions of the Conan books from the fifties? Oh, zero of you. You want to know why? Because those covers are absolute shit. Like they're very like Roman, like when you see Conan, he's like in like gold plate armor with a red cape and a Spartan sword. And he's like, ha 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 ha. Yeah. That's not cool. That's not, um, making prepubescent boys lose their flipping mind, you know? So, um, I think if we didn't have Frazetta, we wouldn't have Conan. And if we didn't have Conan, a huge part of my childhood and, um, my present would be completely fucked. So, um, we all owe a huge debt to him. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Everybody comment, share, like subscribe, leave your comments below if you agree or disagree and want to talk about this. If I've said anything horribly sexist and misogynistic, I apologize. I didn't mean to let me know down below. And so I'll put that on the list of things I'm not allowed to talk about anymore. See ya.